I learned more about myself in those four to five months than I did any time in undergrad. Uh, Armin, welcome to the MCAT podcast. My new, one of my new co-hosts here on the MCAT podcast. Welcome to the the world of the MCAT podcast and all of the thousands of students out there listening to you right now. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Ryan. It's a, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. So if I remember correctly, because uh, I'm 420 something episodes into the pre-mid years, you were on uh, an episode of the pre-mid years with me talking about MCAT stuff. Yeah, uh, that was about, uh, I would say about six months ago, yeah. I believe. Yeah, Not too long a- ago. So yeah. some of you listening may be familiar with Armin and uh, all of his great wisdom in the MCAT world, being a a stellar medical student and a top MCAT tutor for Blueprint and now co-host of the MCAT podcast. You, you should uh, update your resume and, and push that out to your the programs that you're applying to for residency so that uh, they'll go, oh, we, we have a future podcast host for our residency program. You, you make me sound so cool. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to uh, take a little bit of, of a break. We, we will jump back into Full Length One uh, next week. So if you're waiting for some more full length one, uh, don't worry, we're, we're going to jump back into that. Armin is, is perfectly capable of, of, uh, diving in and helping us complete that. But I'm excited because over the next several months, we're going to introduce a lot of new co-hosts to the MCAT podcast. And all of you are instructors for Blueprint's new live online course, correct? That is correct. Yeah, yes. so I'm I'm excited to to really get a lot of different perspectives. Um, obviously, we started with Brian, and then went to Claire, and then with Phil on the MCAT podcast co-hosts. Three amazing co-hosts, obviously brilliant in in each of their own ways for MCAT content. But I'm excited to quite often, probably every month or so, switch off between co-hosts and get different perspectives, different thoughts. So. Uh, before we jump in, why don't we talk a little bit just about you and your journey to medical school and uh, to you being a, kind of a, a an MCAT wizard, so to speak? Sure. Yeah. Where do you want me to start? Let's, let's start when uh, you decided you wanted to go to medical school. One of my favorite questions. So I think that was... I, I would have to say that was about my senior or junior year of uh, high school where I became really interested in medicine. And um, I don't want to say I became interested in medicine. That's when I decided. I guess it was a accumulation of several different uh experiences that occurred over time throughout college that made me really solidify that medical school is the next step for me. But I became really interested in science in the STEM topics in junior and senior year of high school. You know, went into college, uh, you know, majored in biology because I found that very interesting. Um, and throughout my time, I, you know, decided to participate in some research experiences, get um, involved in shadowing, um, gain some clinical experience. And I absolutely kind of fell in love with the whole science and being able to utilize our science knowledge to provide answers for other people. And so you I, you like science and want to help people. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, you know, I don't want to say want to help. Pe- yeah, I do want to help people. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I want to help solve problems yeah. for others. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that's where it really started. And, and concurrently, I, I really fell in bi- love in business, too. So I think it was probably in sophomore, junior year of college where I decided that I want to do a dual degree MD, MBA program. And um, that that was my goal ever since then to pursue medical school and and attain an MBA along with it. And when did you realize that you were an MCAT wizard? Um, by accident. <laughs> um, <laughs> after I took the MCAT, like I did really well. Yeah. Um, and and I you know I I wasn't a very interesting situation in my life. I had I was you know studying. I had you know moved back into my parents' house, moved into the basement of my parents' house, studied for the MCAT, uh, decided to go part-time in, in my job. And, you know, it was just some side job. And um, I did really well in the MCAT, I guess, uh, by studying 
extensively. And um, that's when I decided to like, let's use what, what, what strengths I have to find a new job. And um, I think out of college, that's where I started tutoring the MCAT. Were you also good at the other standardized tests, right? The, the SAT, the ACT, or was it just something with the MCAT? I don't think I was good with, uh, I took the ACT, but I, I didn't score like insanely high. I don't even remember what I scored, but I just like, wasn't, I wasn't like anything substantial. Yeah. Okay. So hard work, dedication on the MCAT paid off uh, on, on a good MCAT score paid off. Um, obviously not all great MCAT scores turn into great MCAT tutors, but you obviously had a knack for teaching other people the MCAT. And that's kind of what I want to get, get into today is, is your perspective on the MCAT. Um, and, and that's where I think I'm going to be excited talking to all of the different um, uh, hosts of or different office hour uh, tutors for Blueprints Live Online course is is getting all these different perspectives. So, from your perspective, what do you think is the biggest trait that makes a successful MCAT student? I would have to say discipline. In my in my opinion, it would have to be discipline. Um, it's you know, studying for the MCAT is is a very introspective part of uh, your life. I would have to say that my, I studied for the MCAT for about four and a half, five months straight. And um, I learned more about myself in those four to five months than I did any time in undergrad. I would have to say that my most transformative times and the times where I truly felt adversity and, you know, challenges was, was in, during the MCAT. And uh, ever since going to the medical school, I feel like one of the, some of the habits that I built studying for the MCAT kind of really propelled me through medical school. And um, obviously, I've faced more adversity there. But, um, you, you know, it, it, the start of it was with the MCAT. And, and I, I think discipline and, and this relentless pursuit to not give up on your dreams or, you know, not let failure define you. That, that was something that I, I believe is, is what really makes a successful MCAT test taker. What does that look like? Because discipline to me is like, oh, just sit down and, and sit there for eight hours and that's discipline. But I think anyone listening or watching will know that sitting down for eight hours doesn't necessarily mean you learned anything. So so when you tr translate that word discipline to what a student needs to do to do well on the MCAT, what does it actually look like? I uh, um, I would have to say that it, it looks like the ability to self-critique, self, -critique, self um, be able to look at your weaknesses, face your weaknesses, face your uh, challenges, and and not be will be brave enough to uh, address those areas and focus on them. For example, like I hated organic chemistry and 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 physics, and now you know those are my favorite topics. That whenever somebody asks me about orgo or physics or gen chem, like I, let's talk about this all day. <laughs> But when I was studying for the MCAT, like that was not, you know, those those were not my favorite areas. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I genuinely believe by being able to look at yourself, self-critique, understand your weaknesses um, and work on your weaknesses and and, you know, still continue to fail. But then learn from each failure. Like, what was it that I learned? What did I do wrong? And look at yourself, not emotionally, but kind of robotically and evaluate yourself that way. You know, over time, this builds up to to being a very successful MCAT test taker. A lot of human psychology is avoiding pain and, and just human nature how we're how we're wired, and that self reflection usually brings a lot of pain with it. Like I am not good at this section. I hate this section. I'm terrible at it. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do poorly. It's gonna keep me out of medical school. I'm never gonna do this. I'm horrible. All right. And and these kind of just down. Uh, just just negative thoughts that beat people in. How how do we overcome that so that we can be self-reflective so that we can actually work on our weaknesses instead of avoiding those weaknesses and just working on the sections that we're strong at? I, I would have to say two things, and these are two things that I did when I was studying for the test. Um, one is keeping a journal. 
like writing down uh, your thoughts and being able to logically assess your thoughts. Like, for example, I would write down in my journal, like, if I don't do well on the MCAT, I'm never going to get into medical school. I'll never become a doctor. I'll never uh, do achieve my dreams. I'm never going to be happy. I'm going to get kicked out of my house. I'm going to end up living under a bridge somewhere. I'll probably have to move to Belize. You know? <laughs> like, well, that's not a hard, hard life. I don't know. <laughs> I still consider it today. <laughs> But um, I, I think, you know, one is having a journal and writing, your, you know, these thoughts out. And what, you know, I was, I was, that's number one. And number two is having a mentor, mm. um, having somebody who you respect and who you really look up to and that you're able to meet on a frequent basis and them to give you their life advice. Um, having somebody that has gone through this and has been very successful and, and you look up to them and them giving you their anecdotal evidence, it's, it, it's very inspiring. And having, you know, somebody that you respect believe in you is one of the best feelings that you can ever have. And I, I, I remember reading, going back to the first point of, of, of the emotions, and I feel like something that really takes us out, makes us really great or makes us really uh, weak test takers is, is emotions. And we let, really let our emotions get in the way. And I remember reading a quote somewhere that, you know, it was this, uh, per, or this, this individual who had gone to um, uh, Eastern Asia where he had given up most of his life you know, what he had in his life, tangible items, learn more and, and explore, uh, you know, the depths of his mind. And he, he, he explored, uh, he explored emotions as imagine you walking up to a window and you're seeing a bunch of birds go by like a, a group of birds, you know, you sit there, you see the birds going by. And for that second, you entertain those thoughts of those birds. And as they go by, you're mindful in this area. Now, um, as they go by, they're gone forever. And, you know, they may or may not come back up, but they're just as is and no, no nothing of significance to them. And uh, this, uh, and he actually said that we you should see your own emotions that way. If I see myself getting scared and anxious about this test, like, yeah, sit there, see these emotions come up, embrace them, uh, don't fight them. But then as soon as they subside, that's what they are. It's just meaningless you know, aspects, just like birds flying by and then go back to what you were doing. Yeah. That's meditation 101, right? A, l a lot of people think meditation is having no thoughts. Like, no, it's your mind never shuts off. It's, it's allowing those thoughts to come in and then just passing them on and, and going, that's nothing, that's nothing, that's nothing. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Mindful. So discipline, obviously huge for success. Where do you see struggles outside of discipline? Where where do you see students struggling the most when it comes to improving their scores? Um, I would have to say falling back into old habits. So um, the MCAT is a very specific style of test that um, you have to approach these questions very methodically. Um, the way that you approach the ACT was very different than how you approach the MCAT and how you approach, will you will approach USMLE step one will be very different how you approach the MCAT. And um, I think, you know, the MCAT has a specific strategy associated with it. And it's something that we have to get ourselves into the mentality of thinking that way. And um, whenever we fall back into old habits, you know, we quickly read an answer, a question and look at the answer choices. That's falling back into an old habit. I, I genuinely, my philosophy is on the MCAT, you read a question, you stop, you think about that question, you reward that question, you try to predict what the correct answer is, and then you go into the answer choices mm. uh, armed with a prediction. Yeah. I, I, I genuinely believe that reading a question and looking at the answer choices is one of the worst things that you can do. Um, there needs to be a pause. And um, I see a lot of students falling into that. Awesome. Working one-on-one -on -one with students, uh, obviously as a tutor, and now uh, moving forward with the launch of Blueprint's uh, new MCAT course, live online MCAT course, when it comes to tutoring versus courses uh, versus self-studying, where do you see those differences coming in for a student who may kind of be on the edge of one versus another? Yeah, so the course is um, has flexibility, but there is structure associated with the course. Um, so, for example, we have an agenda. While that agenda is available for me to alter in such ways per that particular class session, um, I can't alter it fully. 
Um, so it is very structured. It, and the class really expects you to have attended office hours, you know, utilize your resources, be on top of your uh, studying schedule. Um, now, as the tutoring though it does it gives us a lot of flexibility where for example you covered something this past week or or that's coming back and you're having a lot of trouble with it um that we can really focus on and that's that's really the main idea of of tutoring um it's it's very flexible it's i i, I try to reserve the first hour to hour and a half in my tutoring sessions for any questions that the student might have. And, and if the student comes in with a particular question uh, that is, I feel like is high yield, it's pretty important on the test, um, I will spend more time and kind of quizzing them in that, in that area and going into more depth and finally giving them passages. Um, and it's very individualized. Compared to the course, it's, you know, it is structured, but, but there, is, it, it, there is some flexibility allowed, but you will be there with your peers and it does create this collaborative environment, which is also helpful. Nice. Well, as we wrap up here so we can jump into the rest of Blueprint Full Length 1, what are some final kind of words of encouragement for the student out there struggling with their MCAT journey so far? So if you're struggling, I would say keep keep grinding. Um, if there's a will, there's a way. And think about people who you really respect and you really look up to. And these are individuals who have gone through these challenges and have been able to first these challenges and be very successful. And they, in all honesty, those individuals are no different than you. Um, you know, you have the capabilities of, of staying very disciplined and doing well on the test and getting into medical school. At the end of the day, it's, get, it's to get into medical school, right? So, it, you know, who cares if you got a 528 versus a 515 versus a 508? The person who gets into medical school, they got into medical school, <laughs> right? So the numerical value on the test doesn't matter as long as you get in. Um, so, so really, you know, believe in yourself and, and know that struggle is a part of the journey. And, and one thing I like to, to, to remind myself is that the journey is, is what's fun, not the destination. So enjoy what you're doing now, because you're going to be looking back in medical school and you're going to be like, I wish I was studying for the MCAT. <laughs> I wish that's all I had to deal with. Yes, that's uh, some some solid words of wisdom there. I, I am a huge fan of enjoying the journey uh, because if you're only in it for that destination, destination, you're going to be miserable. It's just, it's not fun. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. I, I don't know if you can see, I have uh, Oh, the Places You'll Go by Dr. I, Seuss. I did see that back there, yeah. That is one of my favorite books that I keep up to remind me that the journey has ups and downs and going through the whole journey is what's supposed to be the fun part. It's not about the doctor and it's not about being the end. It's about really, you know, growing yourself and learning and, 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 and transforming yourself to be this individual that has, has, you know, faced adversity, gone through challenges. And now, now you're able to use your knowledge to help others. You're able to improve this world. This world could be a better place by you using your mind. And that is, that's very inspiring to me.